Hi YouTube and uh, welcome. Today we're going to be having a little discussion about uh, Linux commands and uh, getting some of the basics of modifying and um, editing files, moving around the file system from the command line. Um, we're going to be looking at some basic commands and I'm going to have some follow-up sessions with uh, commands specific for networking and um, process manipulations but today we're going to be working mostly with uh, uh, specific files so before we can start moving around within different folders and looking at different permissions and uh, creating files we need to understand a little about the general folder structure that we're going to be working with whether in Windows we have C drive and D drives and program files and uh, my documents and things like that, the linear folder structure is um, very different. It's based on conventions um, that is shared amongst most of the Unixes. Um, so it's kind of a good practice that you familiarize yourself with the different folders and. Uh, uh, what the different folders do. At the beginning is um, not very um, uh, self-explanatory but over time you kind of will learn about different folders and what's their the, the role. Um, the primary um, confusing thing that I would say is the fact that you don't have C drive or D drives rather you have a root uh, structure which is kind of the root of the tree where everything begins, the origin of all the different uh, directory structures that you have and then you have some different folders with um, uh, different um, features or different functionality. Uh, a lot of the functionality from the Linux OS is abstracted to the user of via files so for example there are files like the CPU info that will actually give you information about the specific uh, information on the CPU how many speed and how many cores you have some files about the memory pages how many how much memory you have available uh, some files for the processes that are running on the operating system some files to read from the CD-ROM to write to the CD-ROM to write to hard disk uh, to write uh, uh, to a different uh, I.O. Uh, device so a lot of the functionality from the operating system is actually abstracted to the user um, by files so for example folders like the proc folder are not actually folders they're like virtual folders created by the kernel and then presented to you as a folder structure so it can be modified a lot of the commands that we're going to run later on basically they read that information for specific files f within the file system and then display it to you as a graphical way of you getting the information um, just a general description of some folders so you can be aware um, that we're going to be working with the home folder that would be the equivalent of the documents and settings uh, where all the documents for the different user accounts that are created on the server uh, rely um, then we have the etc folder that's where a lot of the configuration files from the operating systems uh, rely as well we don't we don't have a GUI um, on most of the Linux flavors or if we have a GUI the GUI is just another layer of complexity on top of the files uh, that actually coordinate the file system structure whether on Windows you have some wizards and uh, registry and things like that in Linux you would actually go to a file and edit things within the files like the network interfaces is edited via a file or the users or the uh, um, passwords or things like that that relate to the operating uh, of the computer actually relate to files stored within the etc folder. Uh, the dep uh, folder actually stores abstractions for different device files like CD rooms and hard drives and things like that. Um, the boot deals with some other files um, for boot processing, the menu LST and some other so I would recommend you not to mess much with that unless you do know what you're doing. Then uh, the other folders typically hold binaries or executable uh, for different programs like the bin and the sbin is typically uh, the folder where you find like ping and 
ls and find and some other binaries that come bind, bundled with the Linux distribution. Usually, the distribution uh, has a lot of utilities uh, that are bundled within those specific files uh, folders. Then you have uh, some other folders like the TMP. Uh, the TLP just stores temporary files and is clean usually upon boot up. And then you have the user folder. The user folder is kind of the placeholder for all the modifications you're doing to the system. So any software that you installed uh, that requires to put libraries or uh, source code or binaries, it will usually go under the user um, folder. Instead of going into the binary or the SBIN, these are kind of the folders that are pre-built by the default distribution and anything that you do to the default distribution will go down here to the specific uh, sets for the users. And just to wrap up, kind of the BART folder is where uh, all the locks are placed, the syslog and, uh, and some other locks related to the system and things like for example files for uh, file servers or files for Apache web servers or uh, for databases that usually store under the bar folder so the bar is recommended to be mounted as a different partition or as a different file system uh, to make sure that if these files start um, getting increasingly high they will not compromise the amount of available space to these other folders that are required for the system to operate properly you don't want to go into a zero byte available hard disk and then the system crashing on you because you don't have available bytes to do swapping of memory or, or uh, some other modifications that the operating system might need. Okay, so that's kind of a just a general description of the overall folder structure. So when you're moving to root and then you're moving down to home or you're going to etc or you're modifying and creating a file on TNP for a download or you're looking for a library on lib, you at least you kind of know where you are going and um, what are the implications of the changes you are doing. This also relates to permissions. For example, the root um, user, which is the super user within Linux, has access to all of these folders, to everything within the file system. But the user accounts that you create, they usually restrict it within home, or you can create new folders and give them permissions within specific areas, like user or with var but usually to make modifications at this level of the tree you need to be at root access to be able to make uh, those kind of changes so it not only applies to the implications of what are the type of files you're working with but whether you will be uh, able to make changes within the level of um, permissions and administrations that you have Okay, um, going into some of the specific commands I'm gonna uh, visit them real quick and then we're gonna do a little demonstration uh, the PWD stands for Print Working Directory. That command will tell you what is the actual folder where you're currently working. Because when you're moving between folders and going round and round within a CLI, it's very, it's very uh, easy to get lost and not knowing what is the actual folder where you're located. So you can always do a PWD to know what is the actual folder that you're working with. The CD command, very similar to um, those that are acquainted on DOS, uh, you can move or change directory so you can go down to the root or you can go up uh, some levels within folders. So you can da go down to specific folders. So you just specify the folder you want to go to and that will basically change the current folder that you're working with in your bash session. Then the ls, the listing command, will display all the contents of the current folder they're wor working with or a specific folder that you uh, provide as an argument. Uh, has some modifications to display more information or less information, we're going to see it in a minute. Uh, the touch command allows you to create files, new files with zero bytes. So in case a, a file is deleted or you need it to create a new file uh, as a lock within a specific script, you can use it with the touch command. It will be just a new file empty uh, created. The cat command would actually display the contents of text files. So you can see the content of a configuration file or a file that you created. Uh, it's not very good to display the content of binary files, uh, but you would not be looking at the content of binary files, more uh, rather be executing them. Um, the rn command uh, will allow you to delete files. 
uh, the move command will let you move files within folders or within different folders basically creates a new file with the same permissions the same uh, set of data and everything and then delete the all copy of the file uh, and a new file will be created with the with the new name that is specified the make directory as the name implies creates a new directory remove directory rmdir will as well delete the directory and um, then we have some others uh, like for example more more will display the contents as well uh, in such a way that you're only gonna get a page of output within the CLI and then you need to click enter to continue displaying more lines uh, so the information don't overrun you or it doesn't overflow the screen in such a way that you cannot see it uh, so it's very useful in that sense the find command will let you uh, do a find or find for specific um, file names within the entire file system structure so in case you're looking for the interfaces file and you don't know where to go about getting the file or you forgot the folder where it was located then you can always do a find and then identify where the file is located um, the change mod and the change owner commands they deal with permissions so you can change the owner of a file or you can change the permissions of a file in such a way that uh, some users will or not be able to modify them accordingly so I'm still having um, a few minutes here to do a quick uh, demonstration so let me go ahead and um, do something very quick so right now we are on the home folder I know that because if I do a print working directory I can see that I'm on the home folder and if I want to see the contents for the home folder I can do an ls as you can see within the home folder I have folder uh, which is called Rob I know that because it's blue and um, there's other ways I can know that uh, that's a directory if I do an uh, ls minus l which is l is a modifier for long format I can see that is a directory it has a directory flight set up and I can see the permissions for it I can see the owner and the group for it uh, the size for the folder that's always 4096 for a file folder and then I can see the last time that it was modified now let's say I want to create a file here uh, so I can do a touch and I can create a, a test file now if I do an ls you can see that the test file now exists again and if I want to delete it I can do a rm test and I can delete it you can see that it no longer exists now the touch command has the characteristic of creating an empty file if you do an ls minus l you can see that the file is zero bytes inside so it's completely empty now let's say I want to rename this to test2 so I can just move it around I can move the test file down to test2 and now what I'm gonna have is just a test2 file and the original test file is no longer there permissions and everything else is, is maintained the same now let's say I want to create a folder I can create a folder called rob2 with the make dir command you can see that new folder appears called rob2 now let's say I want to move this file within the folder I can do a move for the test2 into the rob2 folder the dot forward slash notation specified the current folder this is very different from just a forward slash would which would indicate the uh, the root for the file system. If I go into the rob uh, two folder, I accidentally went to the wrong folder, and I do an ls, I can see that the file is is now contained there. Now the cd dot dot is a notation to go back within the folder structure, so I can I can go all the way back to the origin of the tree, which is the series of folders that we discussed before. So this is the first part. I'm going to have a, um, a second part to elaborate on the rest of commands that we're not able to see. So I'll just um, see you in a bit.